Okay, so we were learning about what the small hand on the clock means and the, long, the big hand on the clock means. First, yes, we say the number that the small hand is pointing to first. What does it mean? Our hand is the small hand. What does the long hand or the big hand on the clock mean? The minute hand is the big hand on the clock. And it's going to the next number. So when the big hand gets to the 12, it's going to be another time. And that's what we call, when the big hand is on the 12, we call it o'clock. We say o'clock because that's the minute hand. So what, what time is it right now? On our, on our, on our 11 o'clock. And on our clock, we have our main large numbers. These represent our hours. And our hour hand is a shorter hand because it only needs to be able to point to these large numbers, not to the actual individual minutes. Our minute hand is long, so as you can see, these little dashes around the outside of the clock, they are our minutes because it needs to be able to point to the minutes that are ticking around the outside of our clock. When our long hand is pointing to the one, this right. one actually represents five minutes because from our 12 to our one, we have ticked past one, two, three, four, five minutes. And it's past because we're on our past side of the clock that the one represents five minutes. As we move around our large numbers, the hour numbers, they're actually representing our minutes past. As we keep moving around the clock, we keep counting in lots of five because between each hour number, there are five individual minutes. One, two, three, four, five. So when we reach the two, the two actually represents 10 minutes past the hour. 15 minutes past. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty minutes past. Now we can look at our minutes two side of the clock. Two, but this time we're thinking about how far does the minute hand have to go until it gets to the next hour, or the next lot of minutes, which is back at the 12. So how far does it need to move? So here we can see just like we were before, we can count in lots of five. We've got one, two, three, four, five minutes to go until we get to the 12. So the 11 really represents five minutes to the next hour. And again, 10, pointing to the large 10, we have 10 minutes to go. 15 minutes to go, 20 minutes. Or 25. Let's see 15 minutes. A quarter in time is 15 minutes. A quarter in time is 15 minutes. 15 minutes plus 15 minutes equals 30 minutes. 30 minutes plus 15 minutes equals 45 minutes. 45 plus 15 minutes equals 60 minutes. 60 minutes equals 1 hour. Let's see 15 minutes. A quarter in time is 15 minutes. When our long hand is pointing to 12, we should know that that is o'clock, meaning no minutes have passed, it's the start of the next hour. We also should know that when the long hand is pointing to the six, that that means it is half past the hour because the minute hand has moved halfway around the clock to reach the six. Now we're going to have a look at what happens when we get our minute hand and it moves in a clockwise direction around to the three. Now we can think of this as moving around the clock, around a quarter of the clock. It's moved one quarter of the clock and it's on the past side of our clock. So when the minute hand is pointing to the three, 
we can now call that quarter past the hour because the minute hand has moved a quarter of the way around the clock. Now we're focusing on the minutes two side of our clock. You can see here that we have our minute hand pointing to the nine. We need to think about how far our minute hand has to go till it gets to the next hour. And we can see that it's going to move around in its clockwise direction to the 12. And we can see by dividing our clock again into quarters that from the nine to the 12 is one quarter of a movement around the clock. And so when the minute hand is pointed to the nine, we call that quarter two, the hour. Nine o'clock. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel.